You guys are the brave souls who decided to come out in this crazy weather and to be part of it. So you are the real, you, we, you guys all get the award uh, today. And um, we, it is a partnership between us and the U60 Neighbor Association, but looking out here, you're going to see so many different friends who have their own different associations and groups and organizations. So it's nice to see a lot of different friends who are here today. And that's what makes our, our community so special. We have so many people chipping in to make sure that we attend to all the different issues here. As you probably know, your city council member, Keith Powers, and represents uh, exactly where we are standing here today, the big chunk of the 60s alongside with council member Julia Menon. Always a privilege uh, to be with you guys. I'm a little tactful because I is early voting, so I hope you have voted. I've been out uh, supporting a great candidate, Keith Powers. So, uh, uh, it's, uh, um, uh, I just want to say before our Congress member leaves, sat I've said this a, a number of times, if we have just been, I just want to say thank you to our Congress member and proud of her is that we've just been so lucky to have her and to be our representative. She's been my Congress member, my council member, uh, but I think for elected officials like me and others who came in while Karen Lee was in office, she was a friend and supporter and somebody who showed you how the job got done. And I'd say this all the time, and there was an issue happening on the east side. First phone call I got was, was Karen. And I was trying to figure out, okay, what's going on? Karen would call me and say, I got a plan, let's go, here's what we're doing. And it was a great uh, uh, kind of person to learn from as you're doing this job. So I want to say thank you for it. And she's busier than she's ever been now. So we thank you for your continued service to thank our you. community. And uh, I want to say, you know, you have, uh, I think he's on the agenda, but we have uh, for an AD precinct, Frederick Gallagher, who is a great partner. And you guys should give late time to the precinct all your support, but also give a round of applause. Uh, we, I, I, uh, I was talking to an elected official the other day, and they said to me, I always have a good job you're doing. Somebody else said it to me, and how proactive you are in terms of reaching out to us and making sure we're aware so we can communicate to our constituents about the public safety issues here. So I want to give them uh, a big uh, amount of support. A couple of things, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to do politics here, but I do want to make sure you know that uh, there is a little bit going on. And some of the district lines have changed a little bit. So some of you are changing down to members one way or the other, but I have to assure you that we are, you are great in it, no matter who you have. And uh, if you get it through the ballot, uh, if you see a new name on it, don't freak. I mean, you can't call me and I'll tell you exactly what's going on, but don't freak out because I had some people call me and said, they have the wrong ballot and uh, something moved around. So uh, that is happening uh, right now and until 5 o'clock today and uh, 5 o'clock tomorrow and throughout the whole week and before selection in the seven. So make sure you get out there and vote. Uh, a couple of things happening at City Hall that I'll hand it back to you, to you guys to go through your agenda. Uh, the council will talk about the Greenway. Well, just south of uh, where where many of you are, where the 54th Street, the Greenway that 54th Street, that is going to be opening soon. That's going to be some really good news for the east side. We're going to have an extended now waterfront access. I got an opportunity with the other electors to take a tour of it recently. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, it's opening in December, but when it's actually the next uh, it will be a beautiful, beautiful asset and leave more opportunity for people in the 60s and 50s at a place uh, to be able to enjoy the, the water sign today. As people who live, we always know we live on an island and we live around the water all around us, having more opportunity access that take advantage of it is wonderful. We're working on some additional measures around there. There's been some folks in some place we asked for around the streets, see where folks are going to be biking and coming off that bridge to make sure there's additional safety measures. So, we're working right now to make sure that it's a safe spot and there's security measures and everything in there. But it's going to be beautiful. It's opening up. We believe in December, which is going to be uh, great news and maybe work out some of the any issues there might be right in time for when the warm weather comes around. In the City Council, we have a couple of bills we just passed and signed into law. One was about uh, that fires and fire safety around e bikes and batteries that are blowing up. Uh, if you remember a year ago, there was a building in 57th Street in my district that there was a guy with five bikes in his, in his apartment. One of them blew up, uh, blew up the entire uh, inside of the apartment. The FDNY, God bless them, did a throw and rescue through the window, pulled the people out, saved them. Luckily, the building also had good fire safety measures, so it was contained in that apartment, but we're not. We will, we will know our FDNY will do their jobs, but it's not every building is up to the same safety measures. So, we have to get those bikes off the street. 
It is happening in every single neighborhood. It is happening in, in buildings of all different types, where these uh, either a store or an actual uh, apartment blows up. And so you know, we have three different things we've done. Earlier this year, we passed uh, a law that bans the sale of unsafe and certified batteries. If they don't meet a certain safety, certain safety standard, they cannot be sold anymore in New York City. Right as that was going into law, we passed a bill to say that my law we just passed and said, if you have one, we're going to have a program where you can get rid of that and get them off the street so that so we have to be able to safely dispose of them. Also, we're going to give you a safer battery instead. And that way, we, we recognize there's thousands, tens of thousands of these batteries are out there still on the street. So let's get those with bomb. And then just right at the same time, we're best on that one. I introduced a new bill with my uh, partner, sort of Feliz, that would actually put more responsibility on the delivery companies who have really led to the explosion of the, of the bikes on the street and the deliveries to take away more accountability. They have to be part of the conversation we talk about safety. So, I, and so we're really uh, a lot of um, We just last week signed a bill that converts uh, city, the city's fleet was, was on a timeline to convert open to electric vehicles. We actually started to install infrastructure for places where people can charge them, which actually can be accessed by both municipal vehicles and civilians as well. We looked at one the other day. The mayor signed a bill into, uh, into law that I had passed to the council a couple of weeks ago that will move the whole fleet over over the next 10 years. Some vehicles, we have to make sure it's actually the vehicle that will be online by the time we're ready to move them over. It will accelerate that timeline, but also uh, add more infrastructure into the city so that even individual, one of the biggest hurdles for people buying an electric vehicle is they don't really have charge So we're actually going to create opportunity places in some of the uh, parts of our city where you can actually charge them. So solar power, so if there was a, uh, an emergency of blackout or anything like that, those would be some only places, but right now, that actually is solar power as well. So uh, we just signed that. Well, we also are working on a number of issues. I, uh, this is the worst day for me to tell you about my scaffolding bills because it's pouring out. <laughs> and the only day I have to the scaffolding is when it's like pouring out. But uh, we have a uh, group of the borough president's whole package of reforms around scaffolding because we have scaffolding has been on forever. We have buildings that we think the timelines could be amended, like other cities are doing, other cities have, where you have you can have an extended timeline to do something that work. The local law level is extremely expensive for a lot of buildings in the city. We're looking at ways to maintain safety and also maybe maybe change some of those timelines. We uh, hear concerns about that being unsafe and it's you know not not big really. So we're trying to do a whole host of things, including uh, we're working work with the mayor on new designs for them, using netting instead of scaffolding in some instances, using drones for building inspections where possible. I don't want anybody looking out their window and having a drone in their window, so we have to make sure we're, we're being uh, cautious about that. But we also spent a hearing on five bills that do about noise. And uh, that is because I get complaints all the time about construction noise, about vehicle noise, whatever. And it's such a New York issue, we just throw our you know, throw it up to part of living in the city. You do, there are things we need to do. We're going to try to do that, including one of the biggest complaints we get is people call for them one. They were lobbied the plaintiff and they never know what happened to them. So we actually are going to give people an opportunity to get their active group one reports and actually find out what happened. So we're doing a little bit of transparency around that. Um, and then we're going to do two bills. You guys are getting the first, we're doing two things that are coming up. You guys are going to get the first. This is an exclusive for the East 60 Neighborhood Association, but I want to say to a lot of folks, we're going to introduce a bill, uh, we're going to introduce a bill this week that is going to crack down on illegal marijuana stores that are all over our neighborhood. And it's going to, uh, yeah, uh, we're doing a big, big thing. I actually would invite everybody who's a bit part of, once they come and join us, we'll give you the details. We're going to do an announcement this week, but we are looking at cracking this over again and more. Uh, and more uh, basically using more tools that we think are existing in law, but don't apply them right now to be able to shut them down. It's like the plan for you getting complaint about this all the time too. We get a complaint about them. The sheriff's office been out there and your guys have actually been out there too with them uh, when they go to the stores. Uh, it's a problem. We have a legal market trying to get set up. It's undermined by this. We have a, uh, we have a, you know, uh, it's a popping hole over the place. I know the state folks have been doing some work to try to actually get those under control. We're going to try to do more around that. So we're going to try to we're doing that bill this week. We're also working on myself and the world president, Councilman Men and others. Uh, and I've seen some of the reports to staff, but all of us have done 
a press conference a few months ago uh, about. And, and I, by the way, thank you to 19 for their work. Um, and uh, there's some, there some anti Semitic graffiti under that police side uh, a few months ago, a couple of synagogues. They apprehended the guy from the ball and uh, very quickly. And so we actually think strengthens the hate crime statute at the state level to be able to add in more categories where that may be able to be applied. So we're going to be shortly announcing uh, an effort that as well was a purpose. Uh, beyond that, I think I bored you and it's raining and I would probably want to go watch football or be home or do whatever it is, so I'll leave it there. But always thank you to everyone in this room for the you guys. You, you are the eyes and ears of our community. You are the people that advocate on people who don't know the council member, don't know what's going on. So I'm always so deeply thankful for people that put in the time to make sure we have a better community. So thank you as always. And that I'll get back over to Thanks.